Hey, welcome back everybody. We're continuing on with our virtual lab test environment creation or configuration. We've already set up server 2012 and we've also set up Windows 8, but they both currently do not have access to the internet. That's where this video comes in. This one's gonna be a little bit unique to me because I have not set this up before in a virtual environment, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I think it's gonna work pretty well. And uh, it's going to be kind of a springboard into other videos on this particular firewall. What we're gonna be installing is PFSense. Um, I've used this in my home environment and I've also helped a buddy at work kind to set one up for a local library. It's free. So let's get right into it. Open up VirtualBox. What we need to do is first make sure, and I have the links down below, that you download your PFSense, whatever the version is, the latest version. And I did download the 64-bit version because that's what I'm running here. Um, you'll notice that it came in a .gz format. So you can just download something like, uh, I use 7-zip, file manager. And you can see I already have it in that directory. But you can find that file, which is ending in .gz, and highlight it and just extract it. We're going to be working with this pfsense.iso. Okay? So to create this thing, let's go ahead and select a new one. Hit next. We're going to name it. I'm just going to name it something very simple here. pfsense. For operating system type, you want to select BSD. And then it's already it already came up with the free BSD version, but I am running 64, so I'll go ahead and select the 64 bit. Let's hit next. Now with memory size, um, we can adjust this later if we wanted to. I'm going to leave it at 128 megs because you know I don't know how much RAM your host machine, your desktop has. This one currently has 16 gigs, so I mean I have plenty to work with here, but you may not. So you may want to adjust this to your needs. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at 128 and see how it runs. It should run pretty well because it's very lightweight. Um, it doesn't need a lot of resources. The, the cool thing with PFSense, if you're going to put it in a real life environment, is that you don't need a very powerful machine. You probably want one that's going to run continuously 24/7 without any problems. So you know, having a good power supply and a decent motherboard without you know some cheap capacitors or anything would probably be very beneficial. But here in this environment, we're just gonna run 128 startup disk. We're gonna leave the default here to create a new hard disk. We do want it in a VDI format, dynamically allocated. And um, so what we're gonna do is it's suggesting two gigs. I would, I would say that's gonna be plenty for you. But since I'm gonna be doing some videos here in the future on this particular box for different things, I'm gonna go ahead and add some, a little bit more space. I'm gonna give it six gigs. Um, you, two would be fine for you. You can leave it at two, at least for, for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit next and create. Create again. Okay, so now what we want to do is change some settings in here. Main thing is going to be in our network here. So you noticed in the previous videos for the Server 2012 and Windows 8, we switched the network adapter to be in internal only mode. We're going to do the same thing here somewhat, but on adapter one, let's make this bridged. This is going to bridge this network adapter to my host adapter, which is going to be this one right here. Okay, this is what's this is the tricky part that's going to give it give the whole network, this whole internal network access to the internet. So the other trick part of this is we have to create another adapter. So it's it's pretty much like you're you're pretending that you're putting in two NIC cards in this physical PF sense box. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and enable this one and make this one internal network. And it's important that all three of these machines, the internal network name is the same. They all gotta be the same if you want them to communicate. The reason behind this, I think, is if you want if you had let's say ten different virtual machines here and you wanted to separate you know some machines from other machines you just you can just put them on different network names here so we have adapter 1 and we have adapter 2 adapter 1 is bridged and adapter 2 is internal all right so okay also we can go in here to the storage we'll go ahead and go to our cd drive and attach that iso we're going to go ahead and attach the pfsense iso Hit OK. And let's fire it up. I'm going to hit start here. Okay, we only have 10 seconds here when we started it. 
So I need to capture the mouse real quick. So to install it, let's go ahead and hit number one because we want to boot PFSense. We'll let it go through its thing here. Okay, right here, you gotta keep an eye on it because it's uh, only got another 10 seconds. It says press I to launch the installer or what it's gonna do is go into its like uh, live boot mode. So just pay attention there. Okay, and on this one, uh, our environment for the console settings, let's just go ahead and accept these settings. And for the purpose of this video, we're gonna go ahead and just use a quick, easy install. It's just saying it will automatically install without asking any questions. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and select this first option, hit enter. Now it's ready to reboot. So what we need to do is first go, we need to remove the CD-ROM drive. Otherwise it's gonna try to boot from the CD-ROM drive again. So we're gonna go to devices up here in our virtual box. And uh, we need to remove disk from virtual drive. So force unmount because it's still running. It's like, hey, you can't unmount it, it's still running. So it's okay, well, we just for forced it. And now we're gonna reboot, so hit enter. Actually, uh, I'm not sure what this is doing, so what I'm gonna do is just go to machine. Let's go ahead and just reset it and just see what happens, see if we can boot back up. Maybe, it, hopefully it installed it okay. All right, that's just the default. It's fine. We should be, ask some questions here in a few minutes okay do you want to set up VLANs now no we don't want to set up VLANs we can but we don't want to not for this enter the WAN interface name for A for, or or A for auto detection um, now if you've been following along with this one and your network adapter number one the one that we set up as bridged mode if you set it up just like I did then the name for this is gonna be EM0 and um, that's going to tell PFSense that that network one that we set for bridged mode um, needs to be attached to the WAN interface. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. Now enter uh, LAN interface, which is going to be, and again, if you've been following along with this one, it's going to be EM1. Okay, we're going to go ahead and enter. Optional, we're going to leave that blank. You can, you know, you can have another network card in there, a third one for something like you know, a DMZ or, or just a whole other LAN, but just hit enter. Okay, the interfaces will be assigned as follows. It's just telling you, hey, the WAN interface is attached to EM0, LAN is EM1. Do you want to proceed? Yes. Okay, so here's your main menu. And um, you, it just gives you a brief rundown on your WAN address. Now it's pulling this address from my home network here, which is what the bridged mode is, is is allowing the WAN interface on the PFSense box to do. So the WAN interface has access to like my home network and the internet. So it's just like when you plug in your router at your house, when you plug in that WAN port, it's configured for DHCP and it's getting its um, IP address and IP information from your ISP. So it's kind of like that's what we're emulating here, so, so to speak. So and then our LAN, um, LAN is set up with a 192.168 configuration we may leave it that that network there I was gonna change it to 10.0.0. something but um, my home network is a 10 dot number so that might just confuse people so this may actually make it a little bit easier so we'll probably just leave it at 192 if you wanted to change this um, this is what you would have to do we're gonna enter option number two which is set interfaces IP address so we're gonna hit number two Oops, sorry gotta get my mouse in there hit enter now which interface do you want to configure we're going to configure the LAN number two into the LAN IP address uh, we're going to do 192.168.1.1 just because I want it to be the same but this is how you would change it enter the new LAN subnet bit count we're going to be 20 we're doing 24 which is a class C do you want to enable DHCP server on this LAN um, this I do not want to do because I'm going to be setting up DHCP server on the actual server 2012 and let I would prefer Windows handling all DHCP because then I can it's easier for me to do reservations and just overall management for me personally so no I don't want it to be a DHCP server do you want to revert HTTP uh, as a web configurator protocol um, I don't know what that is so I'm gonna say new 
Okay, enter. So we can just hit enter. Okay, now we're back at the home screen. So basically, if you were to set this up on an actual little old computer, which I had running down in my basement, if you had a monitor connected to it, when you boot it up, this is what you would see right here. This is the screen. Um, it's not real pretty, but you can you can configure a lot of things and do a lot of things here, but the real power is actually accessing PFSense through a web browser from another machine on the same network. And that's what we're going to be doing later on in this series or maybe in a new series. But for now, um, these machines, Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8, actually do not currently have access to the internet because we still got to configure the network, their NICs. Um, and that we're going to be doing in the next video. And I kind of wanted to break these videos up into shorter little ones. This is the configuration for setting up PFSense. We pretty much do not need to even remote into it or do anything else. As long as it's running, we should be good.